Hey everybody, it's Lon Seiben. I am in New York City at a Lenovo preview event. They do these every couple of months or so, and I always like to get out of the office and visit someplace. And we are up on a penthouse on Fifth Avenue looking at some new products. And this is the uh, coolest one I think I've seen in a while. This is the X1 Fold. This is the second generation of this foldable computer. And this one's a lot more powerful. And I got a lot of stuff to show you here with it. So we last saw this at CES and what you've got is a display that is 16 inches, but it can be, of course, folded. And they have a keyboard module that it comes with that when you dock it, this one's not activated at the moment, it turns it into kind of like a traditional 12 inch laptop. The keyboard is similar to what they have on their other X1 devices. So it's got decent key travel, I think, for something this thin. And then it can also, of course, work as a Bluetooth trackpad when you have the display fully extended like this. I'm not seeing any creases on the display here. They talked about how much effort they put into making this fold here work. And it feels really nice and it feels pretty rugged too. It's got a nice uh, fabric back here that they say is made out of uh, water bottles, two water bottles per, per panel here. Um, so overall a really nice design. Display looks great. It is an OLED Dolby Vision display. They've got a 4K or uh, I guess a 2K video running because this is a 2K display but it looks like 4K. It's really high resolution here. If my friend can get in a little bit closer, you can see how that looks. And what I like about this mode here is that you can kind of get both halves of the screen angled the way uh, it works best for you, as you can see. So you can kind of get it positioned where you want it, uh, use your fingers here to navigate or just plug the keyboard into it and you're off and running with that. So they also have a tear down here, so I don't have to do it myself. And here are the panels that you can see coming apart there. Uh, they have a battery, of course, here. There's a second battery that's optional uh, over on the other side to give it a little bit more life. They said with both of these batteries, you can get about 11 hours or so of usage. And they said that was from some response they had from the prior version and that people were working with this all day and then wanted to do some entertainment stuff at night with it. This is fanless. It is running with the latest Intel hardware. You can swap out the NVMe drive on it if you wanted to add more space to it. And you can see just how compact everything is here uh, for the limited space that you have to work with, especially with something foldable. I'm not sure how the thermals will work out on this, but they did say they spent a lot of time figuring out how to get heat away from that processor inside of it, and all in a very, very thin uh, system here, even down to the batteries. And one of the neat things about this is that even though you've got like a big 16 inch display here when it's folded out, it folds up into something pretty small here and very portable. And then the other components, the keyboard and the stand, kind of stack up underneath it. So it can be uh, made very portable, even though you can make it into a much larger display when you have it set up somewhere. So lots of different ways to use it. I really like how uh, just natural it feels. It doesn't feel like you're breaking the screen when you open it up. And I don't really remember what the old one felt like because it was about two or three years ago, but this one certainly feels more refined than the original, a little bit thinner, a little bit more mature as a product. And I'm looking forward to playing around with this one at some point in the near future. Now they also have some tablets here. This is the Tab P11 Pro. It starts at around $399 and it has an OLED display just like the foldable one we just looked at. This of course is running Android. It's got a new MediaTek Companio 1300T octa-core processor. It's an 11 inch display on here. It looks really, really nice. And if you are looking for a nice Android tablet, this certainly looks like one. They have a slightly lower cost one here. This is the P11 Gen 2. Both have pen support. This one has an optional case that will put the pen up here. And when you don't want that sleeve visible, you can actually tuck it back down underneath it. On this one, the pen will actually charge on the unit itself here. And the case has a little cubby for it. So it stays out of the way. And this is like a magnetic capacitive kind of thing there, really cool. Now, I love Chromebooks, as all you know, and we've got some new Chrome OS devices to check out. I'm gonna have my friend zoom in a little bit closer on this one. This is the IdeaPad 5i, and it is a laptop with a 16-inch display running with an Intel processor. And these are becoming more and more popular because a lot of kids in schools like mine are coming home with these little 12-inch Chromebooks, and they want something bigger at home with a little more screen real estate. So this one has a couple of different display options, all at 16 inches here. It goes up to 2.5K. 
uh, with a refresh rate of 120 hertz, which is unusual, I think, for a Chromebook. And I think it's becoming more and more relevant to have faster refresh rates for creative work, but also maybe if you're doing game streaming or something like that off of your Chrome device. And I know a lot of you will be interested in this box here, because this is a Chrome box with the Think Center branding on it. And this is going to be a Intel-based i5 Chrome box that can support up to four displays. It looks a lot like some of their other industrial mini PCs, but this one will be running Chrome OS. And if you were looking for something like this for a school office or a commercial institution or whatever, or even at home, I think this is a nice Chrome box, very sturdy metal casing here and something that I think we'll find a bit of a market, especially given how robust Chrome OS is becoming. And we also have some displays to look at here. This one is their entry level one, the S25E-30. I have a Lenovo display that you often see on the desk when I'm reviewing stuff. This is the new version of it, 1080p, 250 nits of brightness, and it's running at 75 hertz. And they have a new industrial design here where you can put your phone in there and have it kind of pointed towards you, which might be useful. This is a wider display that has a USB Type-C hub built in. So it has Ethernet on the back, an extra USB port or two, and it will also power your laptop. And these are all fairly reasonably priced. We'll get full details on these in a little bit. This one I'm really excited about because this is a relatively affordable 4K gaming monitor, 31 and a half inches, nice and big, IPS. It runs at up to 144 hertz, again at 4K and it covers about 99% of sRGB, and the response rate is 0.5 milliseconds. It supports AMD FreeSync. It also supports HDMI 2.1 if you want to connect up a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox to it. Pretty nice looking display here, and I think it's gonna sell for about 749. And we're starting to see more and more of these Ryzen 6000 powered laptops. This one is their ThinkBook 16P Gen 3. And there's a lot of different configuration options on these. This one I think is fairly well decked out. It's got a Ryzen 9 6000 series processor, probably a 6900 like the Yoga we looked at the other day. And it has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and an RTX 3060 built in. But look how thin and light it is. It's great to see that we can get some really good graphics performance and processing performance out of relatively easy to travel with machines. Of note here, at least on the spec sheet, is that one of these USB-C ports is USB 4, and we haven't seen that on a Ryzen machine yet, so there might be some more flexibility of types of things that you can connect to it. Uh, this one for a display has a 2.5K IPS up to 500 nits. This will do 100% of sRGB, supports Dolby Vision, runs at 165 hertz, so really nice for Gamers, I think, not quite a gaming laptop, but it can certainly play games and very well suited for creative endeavors. And what I'm wearing right now are the new Glasses T1. These are not yet available. They'll probably come out sometime next year. These are not quite a virtual reality headset. They're a little more realistic in the goals that it sets. What it is, is basically projecting a screen in front of me. So if you're on a plane and you want to keep things that you're working on private, it'll project it in front of you so nobody else can see it. And you've got a pretty good size screen in front of you. The laptop here has a little trackpad control that I'm using to control uh, some of the interface here on the screen that unfortunately I have no way of showing you uh, with uh, my camera here, but it looks pretty good. And what's nice is that I'm even looking outside and I can still see the image just fine. I see more color detail when I'm looking at the black curtains over there, but I can make out uh, words and imagery no matter what I'm looking at and everything else is transparent so you can still see the environment around you so if you're watching a movie or something on a plane you may get be less likely to get sick watching on this versus a VR headset that would block out all of the ambient light and things going on around you so it's a neat concept and it feels more realistic to me than some of these these AR things you've been looking at and they tell me this will be pretty affordable as far as this kind of product goes. So that will do it for our preview here in New York City. I want to thank the folks from Lenovo for inviting me over. And it's always fun to check out what's on the horizon. Let me know what you want me to get in here to check out uh, on the channel as things progress here. I think there's a bunch of stuff that you'll be interested in. And I've got a lot of stuff at the studio right now that I'm behind on that you'll be seeing in the weeks to come. So lots more stuff coming from Lenovo. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, 
Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.